Hi guys, in today's video, I'm gonna share all my tips and tricks for writing with rural icing, including the perfect icing consistency, different font styles, and how to achieve them in using a projector. So let's jump right in. The first thing I wanna show you are my preferred icing consistencies for writing with rural icing. And I typically use two different icing consistencies. The main one I use is a piping consistency. So you can see that a piping consistency is something that's similar to like a toothpaste. It kind of bends back over and curls. When you lift a spoon off the surface, it forms a soft peak, but it doesn't actually flow back into a flat surface. It never settles. You can keep a lot of the definition of the icing, but it's still not too thick that it's really hard to pipe. So that's my first icing consistency and the main one that I use in just about every single text or font style. So I'm gonna put it into a piping bag and set that aside before moving on to the next piping consistency or icing consistency. And that icing consistency, the next one I'm gonna show you is what I like to call like a 30 second flood consistency, something that's a little bit thicker than your standard flood consistency. And the reason I want it a little bit thicker is because I'm gonna be flooding really small areas and I don't want any craters or divots to form once the icing dries. So I typically test that by kind of shaking my spatula or even shaking the bowl to see if a little bit of like wiggling will create a flat surface again. And that's the icing consistency that I want for this. And I'll use this icing consistency in any bigger, fatter fonts that have large sections that need to be filled. Um, this is what I'll use to fill in those sections. And then the third consistency I'm gonna make is just a basic flood consistency. This is what I would use to flood an entire cookie, but I wouldn't use it to flood small sections of anything just because it's so thin that it could run over um, your border and it could also create divots or craters once it's dried as a really thin flood icing tends to do. So this is just gonna be used um, to flood the cookie itself. Here are my four main textiles for writing on cookies. And for each of these, I'm gonna use either one or both of the piping consistencies that we created earlier, either the piping or the 30 second flood consistency, the thicker flood consistency. And whenever I'm writing, I like to cut a really, really small tip in my tipless bag. So I do that by flattening the tip of it and then cutting a really small hole. If it's too small to pipe anything out of, I'll cut it a little bit bigger, but I always start small and then cut it bigger if I need to. For the 30 second consistency icing, I cut a slightly larger hole just because I'll be using that to fill a larger. So the other sheet I have is just a list of all my favorite fonts and I'll cover that a little bit later, but first I wanna show you how I write in each of these styles. So for the handwriting, which is typically characterized as like a monoline, so one thin line either in a cursive or just a plain, you know, handwriting style. I just use my piping consistency. And this is my favorite because you just draw one line and with cursive writing, it can be really quick. Um, so this is one of my favorite styles to use. So as you can see, that was pretty quick. So the next I'm gonna show you is calligraphy. So this is typically characterized as having a little bit of contrast between the upstroke and the downstroke. So as I go down with my piping bag, that stroke of the letter is thicker. So what I do is I actually draw two lines. So I make a section where that larger downstroke is, and that is what I'm gonna fill in with my 30 second or my thicker flood consistency. So I typically just go over the outline of, of the letter with that piping consistency icing, and then I create another border for the downstroke, for the thicker downstroke, and then I go back in and fill it with the 30 second. You can see with the G there that because I'm having that line cross over the top of the downstroke, I'm actually not crossing it just yet. I'm gonna fill in that section and then I'll cross it over later. So you'll kind of see what I mean um, when I get back to that part. 
And I really prefer for calligraphy style to have something with a really thick downstroke. That just makes it a little bit easier. If it is a thinner downstroke, you could use pressure piping where you actually press harder on the piping bag to create a thicker downstroke. I personally am not very good at that. Um, that takes a lot of practice. So I really like this particular um, way of creating that thicker downstroke. And once the text is completely outlined, I go in with that 30 second cons consistency icing and just fill in those sections. So I'll fill in a couple letters at a time and then I'll use a scribe tool or a toothpick or anything that's sharp and pointy to just help fill in all the gaps and just make it look a little bit more cohesive so it doesn't necessarily look like I'm using two different um, piping consistencies. And the other benefit of doing it this way is when you outline the entire text first and then you pipe this thick flood consistency in those sections, it creates a really puffy letter. So if I were to do um, more of a pressure piping type of um, way of creating this calligraphy style, that text wouldn't be quite as puffy, but because I have a border, a really um, sturdy border, and then I'm piping in those sections, it makes it really nice and puffy. So if that's what you're going for, then this is the method for you. And now that those sections are filled, I'm going to go back over that downstroke of the G and of the Y to make it look like the stroke is actually coming up over the downstroke, if that makes sense. And so if, if I need to, I can use my scribe tool to just help connect those. Next is the sans serif font. And the sans serif font could be big and puffy like you see here, or it could be a monoline, you know, very fine um, text like you see everywhere else in this worksheet. For the demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how to create these big block letters that are really nice and puffy. And it's really the same method as the calligraphy where I outline each letter in the piping consistency icing first, and then I fill in the section with the thicker flood icing. Now, if this were just a monoline um, sans serif font like you see in the text throughout this worksheet, I would just use my piping consistency icing like I did for the handwriting style. Um, and so that is a really easy text style to use if you need to do something small or if you're adding a lot of text to a cookie. This bigger block version of the sans serif is great for just one name, one word, or one very small phrase because it's really great as a big text um, and it can draw a lot of attention to your cookie. And the last style I'm going to show you is a serif font and serif fonts have those little lines at the beginning and end of each of the letters. And I got to tell you, this is not my favorite because of those little lines. They are very hard to achieve. Sometimes it works better in a larger font like this one, um, where there's a lot of contrast between, um, those small lines and then the thicker portion of the text. And again, this is very similar to the calligraphy style. So you just make a line for the really small sections and then you create a border or a boundary for the larger sections of the text and then fill them in with the thick flood consistency icing. So the last three that I showed you are actually very similar to one another. It's just the style that's a little bit different, but the method is very similar. And like sans serif, a serif font can be just a really thin, fine monoline kind of font. And those um, are really great as like a small, small text on your cookie. I really like the bigger version to do, um, you know, monograms or like a Mr. and Mrs. on a wedding set or something like that. 
and you can download this particular worksheet and practice on it. You can also download the um, My Favorite Fonts one, which you'll see next, and you can practice on that as well if you want to get the hang of writing with royal icing without using a projector. So here are a couple other of my favorite ones. So this is the sans serif font um, that's just a monoline. So you can see how quick and easy this is to pipe. Um, again, one of my favorites or any of the ones that are just a single monoline are some of my favorites to pipe because they are quick and easy. And this is a serif font that's just a monoline. And you can see I'm piping the little serifs first and then I pipe the rest of the text next. For me, that just helps um, make sure that the letters are kind of nice and flat. So piping on paper is really fine for practicing, but most of the time, or all of the time I should say, I'm using a projector to write any of my writing. Not only does it help make sure that the writing is perfectly center um, and fitted to what I'm piping on, but it also makes sure that I'm one spelling correctly and all my lines are perfect. Um, so I highly recommend investing in a projector if this is something um, that you're looking to make a business out of or it is your business or you're trying to you know up your game or up your hobby I highly recommend um, investing in a projector they aren't super duper expensive and you will get so much use out of it especially if you do a lot of writing on your cookies so you've seen me do all of these styles before um, I like using the projector to do all the outlines and then I flood them without the projector shining on it because sometimes you might miss a spot um, or miss kind of a gap in the icing. I will say one of the tricky parts of using a projector is sometimes your hand does get in the way and you are blocking what you're trying to pipe. So you do have to get used to holding your hand at a different angle sometimes. Um, so sometimes I'm holding it directly up and down and sometimes I'm holding it to the side um, just to make sure that I, my hand isn't blocking um, the projection, but if necessary, I will mark some major points on that letter um, just so I know kind of where that line is supposed to go. I hope you found these tips and tricks helpful. My number one tip, however, is practice, practice, practice. And with that practice, you'll become so good at writing on cookies in any different font and style, and maybe without even using a projector. Um, I do also recommend looking at my accompanying blog post, which has the worksheets that you can practice on, as well as some other useful information that might help you when writing on cookies. So I hope this helps, and I can't wait to see what you create. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe below.